Hello, Anastasia. Hi, Joanna. Welcome, everyone. Hello. We meet again today to participate in the investigative cycle number 255, the protocol number one. I am Ioana Sima, external hypnooperator and student of the Calogerografasi Academy, and Anastasia is a telepathic support of the Calogerografasi method and does not know today's topic in order to avoid contaminating the information. The investigative sessions are composed of a protocol consisting of two parts. We have the fixed part, that is predetermined questions that we cannot modify or deepen, and the free explorative part, which is made in order to deepen the answers from the first part. If you want a personal session with me, you have all my contact details in the description part below this video. Anastasia, you can get comfortable. Yes. And while you're doing that, you can already start focusing on your breath. Perfect, perfect. Perfect. Good. You can start to relax your body. And I will count from three to one and assist you in this deep relaxation of your mind, of your body. Three, as my voice guides you, shift your attention to your breath. Breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. Exhale deepens and relaxes you further and deeper. To Continue to deepen this state at your own pace. Your body relaxes and all tension disappears. Very good. You are now deeply relaxed and calm. When I will be counting from one to three, you will connect with Hurricane Milton, and on three, you will tell me how you perceive or visualize it only on the metaphysical plane. One, two, three. Before you started counting and t told me the, the subject, I saw Mm, like an office with uh, people at computers 
um, like a lot of people, a lot of computers. And then I saw um, an image of like one or two satellites. Mm -hmm. I um perceiving like an image of like wind circles, but not um not not like on the ground, uh, like above the the dome of the earth like a coverage of wind circles. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is Hurricane Milton a natural phenomenon? What do you perceive about it? Mm, the first thing that came is no. And I saw again um, the satellite image um, it's very deeply connected to f like the thing that came to me is energy transmissions and like frequency yeah anything else no. Good. Now, go back in time, follow the trajectory of Hurricane Milton, and tell me everything you perceive. Mm. I saw... Um... And the image that I perceived is like humans, but also like mixed with reptilians. And there are like three of them gathered at a table and there's a map. And they're like pointing fingers at certain points. Like, this is what we have to do from here, from here, from here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. How did this meteorological phenomenon affect the collective consciousness of the inhabitants of the United States? I just saw like a drop, like something dropping, um, like weight, but like not dropping in a sense of letting go of it, but like going from high to low or medium to low. Mm. Mm, so it was, it was like an ink increase of fear. I see though a lot of resistance. Um, like it, it hasn't um, affected necessarily like that many people as before. And I'm saying this on a uh, not like on a physical level, on a on an energetic level. So like, not. I see fear, but it has impacted a lot less. So I see a lot of resistance from people. Mm -hmm. Good. Now observe its impact on the global collective consciousness. The image that I'm seeing is kind of strange. I see like the, um, the dome 
um, above. And yeah. then there is, uh, and I perceive it as like a source of information, which is not necessarily true or false. It's like a programming type. And there's like lines, informational lines connected to it, starting from one point, and they're just spread across the map. I'm just seeing the the map that we're used to. Yeah. And it just spreads like the lines spread to different parts of the world in the sense of spreading the programming, but I don't see as many. As many what? As many lines? Yeah. Okay. Related to the hurricane. Or in general? Mm, I feel like I, like the perception that I had is like the hurricane is a part of this big source of information, whatever that sits at okay. top of at the top of the dome. OK. Compare Hurricane Katrina, Hurricane Helen and Hurricane Milton. What is the most important data you perceive about this meteorological phenomenon? Mm, I perceived an image of like wiping, like cleaning. Uh, like rounds of cleaning. It's not clear to me yet what exactly cleaning. Um, we can uh, look into more details in the free part, yeah. so it's fine. OK. Go to the future and tell me which phenomena of catastrophic nature can occur in the United States and what is the cause of their appearance? I saw like water raising. Um, like a lot of water raising. I saw cracks in the earth. Mm, like some type, like you see in a, the volcanic re reactions, but it's not filled with lava, it's just cracks. And water raising. And the cause to me is like what I perceive is some of it is natural. But like 50 50, like some of it is natural, some of it it's controlled by. Again, I see the image of like satellites and like okay. that room of computers. Good. Now we finished with the fixed part. Stay there and let's go observe these satellites. How many satellites do you see? What's the number that comes in your mind? 52 came to my mind and what I saw is like a ring, like a circle, very filled circle, um, like around the dome. This circle is composed of these 52 satellites? Yeah. OK, who is responsible for these satellites? Um, I, I saw again that room of computers okay. and uh, now it's more clear that they're humans, but also like reptilians. 
so it's a combination mm -hmm. but the humans are also controlled by the species so good let's go to that room of computers is it physical on earth or is it metaphysical and I'm, I'm i'm not so clear uh like from a lower perspective i saw the humans at the computers and the reptilians are like above them but in an in the in a Okay. energetical field so like yeah. not in the physical mm -hmm. they're like overwatching this um image that you have of the satellites and the, the room of computers these computers what are they used for i see programming the satellites Okay, that's what came to me. Okay. If I say harp, what do you perceive about this in this room of computers? Is there a link? Yeah, I saw it instantly like the image light up, light, light it up. Mm -hmm. And I saw like strings, like connections from what I perceived as this room to the satellites, like little strings of information, like connections. You can see like the information going through them, like through tubes. From the computers to the satellites. Yeah. Okay. So let's go to the map, to the humans mixed with the reptilians that were around the table and that were mm. pointing on a map. Yeah. Is this physical? Is this metaphysical? Hmm. I see a um, very mixed. So some reptilians are like actually there physically, also humans, but there are also some reptilians that are in the metaphysical, okay. controlling the humans in the room in Wait. some way or form. Okay, now look at the map. Yes. How do you see it? So it, 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 you said it's like the world as we know it today, but can you give me more details about this? Does it have colors? Does it have, I don't know, pins? What is on that map? I see some of the areas colored in orange. Which I ones? I see the United States. I see see the the north of Africa like a big part of the top of the continent and then some spots all around the the continent I see a lot of orange in the Middle East yeah so, um, What came to me is like the north of France. Okay. Like a, a piece of that and some of the no, UK. But also like a um, the part of the orange is like extended in the like the top of the map. The, the ice zones, like the above Iceland. Above Iceland, um, the North Pole? Yeah. Okay. What else is on this map?
what colors do you perceive? Um, I perceive not colors, but like little pins that have an attribution of like missions or like specific control, like more amplified quantity of control. I don't know, that's like very mixed. It's a lot of things attributed to those pins. Um, and where are these pins located? I saw friends. Yeah. Oh, Washington came to me. Mm -hmm. Mm. And also something I can't really understand, like where exactly, some somewhere in the Middle East, in that okay. zone. Okay. What does the orange color represent? The words that came to me are anomalies. And um, oh, it just came to me and it like, no, I can't. So I'm going to count to three and at three, you will have a clear image of the meaning of the orange color on this map, okay? One, two, three. Yeah, so it's anomalies. Uh, it's, the word hiding came to me. Um, and again, that cleaning. Um, I can see it more clear, but I think it's best if we of course so yes at question six you mentioned the wiping the cleaning when we discussed about the three hurricanes the katrina helen and milton mm -hmm. visualize them and tell me what is the meaning of cleaning cleaning of what? The word that came to me is resistance. But uh, when I said earlier, like anomalies, mm -hmm. I saw this orange color like a combination of natural disasters, induced natural disasters, also military conflict um things that wipe away resistance um they act as a distraction also so it's like um i see like a like a, a, an agglomeration of dust that like creates some kind of blur be, like in front of your eyes so you don't see think you don't see things clearly mm -hmm. so like that's on the physical but also like the energetic of course spectrum. now go see who or what is responsible for this cleaning I saw the reptilians like it was a weird image because it was like them hanging on those satellites like in a circle. Like 
the kids at the at the at the park there are those horses that you hold by yes yeah and you, yeah and you like move right move it yeah where you want that like i had that image so it's reptilians riding image. satellites yeah it is funny yeah it is um, a funny image <laughs> but they they are very serious of course they are <laughs> Okay, so these satellites that are connected to this room of computers, right? But go go see a reptilian that's riding a satellite. Choose one and just go next to him. Yeah. Well, how, how does this reptilian look? A very... Mm, like, with a very angry face. Mm. Um the term that came to me is like belly full belly full okay yeah. and does he have a q a what a tail a tail yeah okay is he dressed no okay is it a male or a female because i'm saying he but it, I don't it's know. a male it's a male it's a, okay okay What's his name? Xonus. Xonus? Yeah. Okay. Um, ask Xonus. Why is he riding a satellite? He said, because that's my job. Tell him he has a funny job. <laughs> And tell him we also do that, but when we're kids, usually under five years old, in a park. Yeah, he doesn't like that. Yeah. Um, is he in an amusement park? <laughs> His face is very confused. Why? It's like, am I joking? <laughs> yes. Of course. <laughs> Am I a joke to you? <laughs> so, okay. Let's ignore the fact that he's in an amusement park, but ask him what is his job, really? Um, the words that came to me is like quality control and direct and directing the the energies but also the image that came to me right now when i saw like him directing the satellite is energy going out of the satellite like signals and i instantly saw from the like from the whatever phenomenon they're causing energy coming right back up through this satellite and it's like connecting to, to this individual if we can say that my see like a tube mm, right through his heart Okay, so the energy from the satellite, let's observe it, let's observe it. it it's leaving the satellite, so he's sending something, from what I understood, right? Yeah, it's more like a type of frequency control, I don't really yeah. know how to explain it better. Okay. okay. It's like a manipulative frequency. Okay. Well, you're gonna observe in related to Hurricane Milton, okay? What did he do? How did that happen? Tell me the steps. He's sending a frequency. Where? I see him charging the satellite like making movements with the the 
pause, yes. like with the hands. And I see the energy being like a, a very concentrated sphere inside of the satellite. Um, Where does he send this sphere? Where is it landing? I see it like um, el electrocutions. Yeah. Like right above the land. I see it in the starting in the of, in the west of the United States. Yes. In the west of uh, like south, somewhere southwest, in the corner. Okay. Southwest, yes, somewhere in the corner. And then it's traveling. Um, it's like frequencies that cause disruption, natural disruptions, or I see it sometimes, now I'm not referring to Milton, I see other things that it causes like electric, somehow to manipulate masses or induce um, induce like a field of energy to provoke some type of actions. And how does how does this get to the humans then? What exactly? These frequencies that he's sending to control actions and to di this disruptive energy. I see creating like a, like a bubble um, around the, the mass of people that are wanted to be controlled. Mm -hmm. um, I see like the bubble and those electrocutions are like covering that bubble. In some sort of dome, but a very big one, like big, uh, big pieces of land or of people. It's covering that dome and it's uh, somehow uh, inducing a frequencies, like low frequencies or whatever is desired and blocking a lot of I perceive voluntary thinking and voluntary like energies. Yeah. Okay. You mentioned a lot of times the word the word dome. Right. So yeah. this dome that you saw above that is spreading across the map, that has informational lines, you said. Mm -hmm. The programming type of dome. Mm -hmm. What really is this? And what is, what is it made of? How do you perceive it? I see a lot of um, number zero ones. It's like a coding, a program. Okay. Um, I see it also as an agglomeration of uh, of thin strings, but uh, that are like very tied to each other. So they're like an infinite amount. Mm -hmm. uh, each one filled with information and programming, and they uh, they basically act as uh, what came to me as informational prison mm. or like a prison in general but it, the word information also came to me okay informational prison will so... prison sorry it's just so it's informational will prison or just will prison. Uh, the word will came to me also. So like will prison, informational inf prison. Okay. Okay. So <laughs> this dome, where do you see it? Where is it? On which part of the planet? 
Mm, I see it covering. Mm. So I see the like a sphere, like the planet. Yeah, it's all I see it in shadow now. And I see this dome over the what we know as the map. Yes, of the world. It's covering that piece of the map, but like that's only like a part of that bigger sphere. But I. Is it covering the whole map as we know it today? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so you also mentioned that this hurricane, the Milton hurricane, did not affect that many people as before. Energetically. Yes, so fear mm -hmm. impacted it a lot less. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, for Hurricane Helen, there wasn't like this big announcement and they had a lot of damages. But for Hurricane Milton, the, there was a big announcement on television, prevention and stuff like that, and they didn't have that much damage. Why? I perceive again that uh, it's just a facade with it came with the intention of not necessarily destroying the place but creating that blur in front of your eyes in front of the people to create confusion to um to hide something, um, to take away attention. Okay, why? It what is the reason? Yeah. Uh, the word that came to me is like agenda. That's agenda. the agenda. Cool. Why did this hurricane hit the um, east coast and more specifically florida orlando why why this zone um the, mm, i perceived like that it's m more credible. That's the thing that came to me. It's like more okay. easy to make credible. Mm -hmm. And what what do you perceive any reason behind this um, related to the agenda that you mentioned? Um, I just saw like the I saw the it's a weird thing the headband yeah with the years okay um it's like okay ma like a m mouse headband like me yeah. mouse okay so. So the link with Disneyland. What is what is the link with Disneyland? And Hurricane Milton. I uh, perceived like as I said before the it, um, it started in the west. In the west, yes, I see traveling. Uh, with the mission again to 
to wipe off, to distract. Um, I see a lot of energy in the area of Disney World. What type of energy? Um, the word abuse came to my mind. Okay. Okay, so if I understood correctly, there is, you perceive a link between Hurricane Milton and Disneyland in Orlando. Yes. To wipe off the abuse. What kind of abuse? Where? At, at Disneyland? Mm. What I saw is the castle. Yeah. Uh, from the park. But I saw like a, um, a carving beneath the castle. Uh, so like not from uh, above the, the ground, uh, be beneath the ground. Yeah, underground. Mm -hmm. Under the castle? Yeah. So observe what happened with the hurricane. I just had an, um, a perception of somebody putting their head uh, from underground and like taking a, a breath of air. Someone like a human uh, or? An... Yes. Okay. Uh, Um, when you ask me, I thirst perceive the human, but also it's a mix somehow. Okay. Uh, I saw a reptilian like holding s someone by their waist, like holding up, like taking out. Okay. Where is the army? Do you perceive any army there? I perceive a portion on the ground and some under. In Florida? Yeah. Okay. Why doesn't the actual American government send help for the people in this hurricane? What came to me is like there are others that are um, in control of this or who to take care of this. It's someone else's responsibility. Whose responsibility is it? What do you perceive? The reptilians again came to my mind. So it's the reptilians responsibility to help? No, not to help. The focus that I see is not really helping anyone. It's only helping themselves. That was the 
the point of the hurricane. Um, the reptilians helping helping themselves. Yeah. Okay. But at the same time, we have this Disneyland thing, the underground thing uh, that is happening. Yes. How does that benefit the reptile, the reptiles? I saw again, I, I keep seeing this image of them taking out. OK, let's go approach, approach. Hmm. I see children. Where? In the hands of the reptilians. Like the taking out children. Mm -hmm. And observe. To do what? Mm, I just said the word move. Move. Move, cover up. Okay. Position yourself on a higher level, Anastasia, and observe the whole scene, raise your frequencies. So, you are at the castle in, at Disneyland in Orlando, in Florida. Mm -hmm. Hurricane Kames, the hurricane is there. What is happening yes. on a metaphysical plane? Um, I s I see like an, um, the castle, the 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 ground around it, mm -hmm. isolated by like um, some sort of wind mixed with sand. So I see that image. It's like in the middle of a tornado somehow. Okay. But on a very metaphysical. Yes, thing. on a much okay. bigger scale. Okay. So I see that. And then I see like the map and like uh, pathways beneath the ground. Yes. Uh, like in a shape of like snakes. And ju I uh, just see them taking out the children. And moving to other areas that are also um that also have that type of uh circle like piece yeah. of ground that is isolated by that wind and uh, sand okay yeah. you also, you yeah okay got it so you mentioned yeah, ob observe closely who is taking the children out I saw again the reptilians, but also military trucks, some type of big trucks. Mm, and I see as the driver, a guy in the uniform. Okay. 
really quick, go to the reptilian there that is taking out the children from the tunnel. Yes. How does he look? The reptilian. Tail. Tail. Dressed, uh, undressed. Mm, undressed. Okay. Um, um, almost like crocodile uh, nose. Yeah. But undressed, yes. Okay. Ask him. Why is... Where is this kid coming from, first of all? Mm, trafficking came to... Okay. For how long this has been going on there? Where exactly? In Under the castle at Disneyland, Florida. 15 years came to my mind. Okay. Why is the reptile taking out the children? The, um, I perceive the phrase is time to move, time to compost. Mm -hmm. Time to move where? Where are they going? A different station. Where is this station? Mm, I, I just perceived Mexico. Okay. What is the link with the army there? Mm, I perceive the word provider. Who controls the army there? I saw the room with computers. Yes. And also in that room, I see people on beds with things on their head. Okay. So mind control. Yes, some type of programming. Mm -hmm. Okay, got it. Disconnect from there, Anastasia. Disconnect from there. Take a deep breath. Is the Hurricane Milton in any way related to the presidential elections? I don't see that. Okay. I, mm, the thing that I perceive is like uh, separate agendas. Uh, I saw that this the one with the hurricane. I, like, the thing that I see is like the map and like different areas covered and they each has their own bubble. This was just a bubble. The like, hurricane? Yeah, just okay. one of them. Okay. Um, about the dome, the information of prison and the will prison, how does the dome affect the people on Earth? I perceived an image of like push down, push down, push down, constant push down. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like 
I see people who constantly getting up, they're pushed back down, getting up, pushed back down. Do you, do you perceive any people who didn't got pushed back down? Yes. Okay, so what happened to them? I see a very complex image of, um, let's say, like I see the person who didn't get back down and the one who remain there and keeps getting pushed yeah the one that keeps getting pushed i see like um it's like an agglomeration of um, you know how n neurons look it's like they're connected from the spine to the this dome all of these lines of information mm. Because I said they're very thin and uh, there's a yeah. lot of them. And it's like they're um, connected to that person. And what I perceive those lines are, are just an, uh, an elongation, like a. Um, um, yes. Um, I hope you understand. I understand. <laughs> It's like um, an, extension. an extension, an extension of the the programming lines um, that are very attached to this person. The person who didn't uh, who didn't get up. Okay, the programmation lines are yes attached okay, to that person. Attached to this person. Okay, the one that did get up. Yes, I see those lines cut up so there are no lines okay uh, they uh, cut all the lines uh, the lines in the sense of I see like the snapping of fingers and uh, dissolving programs the dissolving b beliefs and the, the person that has no lines is still under this dome. Yes. From what I understood, but not connected to it. Yes. Okay, how many, what percentage of people not connected to the dome do you perceive right now in the world? What's the number that came to you? The first that came to me is 34. Okay. And how can people, the rest of the people do not 34 because they're, they're already not connected anymore, but how can the others cut these lines and, you know, disconnect um, from these programs, from the programs of this dome. Mm -hmm. I saw an image of stepping back, um, almost like an image of uh, lifting up above your body, above your experience, and observing it from that point of view and making decisions from that point of view. Uh, so like... Change perspective? Change perspective, yes. Uh, be in a state of the one who observes, uh, which means that like you're not um, integrated or acting uh, influenced by the surroundings. So somehow uh, extract yourself from there and try to see and make decisions um, not influenced by the exterior or any other factors. But influenced on what? On what feels right to you. Okay. Good. Did you... Have you seen or perceived 
or visualized anything else about the Hurricane Milton that is happening right now? No. Okay, very good. So now I will count from one to three. And at three, you will be in the present where we speak. One, disconnect from everything and everyone. You are coming back totally into your body. Your space is clean and you are clean. Raise your frequencies to your maximum level. Two, your body is becoming lighter and stronger. You can move it with pleasure and ease. And three, you can open your eyes. Welcome back. <laughs> How do you feel? <laughs> well, uh, the images were so complex that it was hard for me to even put them into words yeah got it got yeah. it did you like the journey did you enjoy the the ride yeah very i feel like complex one informationally yes a lot of informations yeah a lot of them okay mm -hmm. thank you so much anastasia Thank you, Iwana. And thank you so much, everyone, for watching and for listening to us. Thank you. We'll see you soon and wish you have a nice evening. Nice Bye. evening, everyone. Bye. Bye. Buenos días. Dzień dobry. Bienvenidos a este primer video de Disclosure en español y polaco. Bardzo Was serdecznie witamy. Na tym nowym wideo, które będzie w języku hiszpańskim i polskim na kanale Disclosures. Vamos a producir mucho más videos en futuro como estos videos informativos. W przyszłości stworzymy dużo więcej takich wideo, które będą Was informowa informowały o różnych rzeczach. Porque estamos notando que cuanto más se va divulgando este trabajo, estas hipnosis por internet, también cuanto más mala información se está difundiendo. A to dlatego, że zauważyliśmy, że im więcej wstawiamy sesji z naszymi hipnozami, tym więcej jakby informacji sprzecznych zaczyna się rozprzestrzeniać. I entonces hoy vamos a hablar de las sesiones investigativas. Więc dzisiaj będziemy mówić o sesjach badawczych. Porque estoy viendo que hay personas que a lo mejor se dedican a una sesión con una persona, se van a algún lugar, preguntan algo y lo poco de información que pueden extraer de una sesión se lo, se lo creen como si fuera oro, completamente puro oro. Pues zauważyłem, że są takie sesje i takie osoby, które robią jedną sesję z jedną osobą na dany temat i kiedy wychodzi tam jakaś informacja, to jest ona odbierana, jakby to, była rzeczywiście, jakby to było rzeczywiście coś niesamowicie wiarygodnego, jakby to było czyste złoto. Yo os digo que la sesión así dicha investigativa no existe. Ja chciałbym wam powiedzieć, że sesja badawcza tak naprawdę nie istnieje. Entonces podríais como preguntar, entonces cuando haces una sesión a un cliente y preguntas cosas, ¿por qué preguntas? Więc mógłbyś sobie, mógłbyś mi zadać pytanie, więc skoro robisz jakąś sesję z jakąś osobą i zadajesz jej pytania, to właściwie po co je w ogóle zadajesz? Sí, sabemos que la información en hipnosis está muy, pero de verdad muy contaminada. My bardzo dobrze wiemy, że informacja, która wychodzi podczas hipnozy jest niezwykle, ale to niezwykle zanieczyszczona. Y esa información, así como sale de la hipnosis, no podemos tomarla como conocimiento, como investigación. 
Więc taka, taką, takiej informacji, która wychodzi podczas sesji hipnozy, nie bierzemy nigdy jako takiej informacji, która jest rzeczywiście zgodna, z, bardzo prawdziwa, zgodna z prawdą i oczywista. En el caso de sesiones a clientes, la información que sacamos no sirve por otro objetivo. El objetivo es llegar a la causa de su problema y trabajar. Te informacje, które uzyskujemy podczas sesji dla klientów, służą nam zupełnie do czegoś innego. Celem jest to, żeby znaleźć przyczynę i pracować nad nią. Pero qué significa que la información está contaminada? ¿Cuánto está contaminada y por qué? Ale co to właściwie oznacza e, informacja zanieczyszczona? Kiedy jest zanieczyszczona i dlaczego jest zanieczyszczona? Hay que saber que cuando nosotros e, pedimos una información y nos llega, nos llega a través de una persona en hipnosis, esta información sale de una fuente, para así decirlo, y atraviesa muchas dimensiones, muchas densidades. Kiedy prosimy o jakąś informację podczas sesji, to ta informacja, powiedzmy to w ten sposób, pochodzi z jakiegoś źródła, ale w międzyczasie przechodzi przez wiele gęstości i wiele wymiarów. I también pasa por conciencias, por inteligencias. Esa información viene atrapada en el éter por varios seres. Ale ta informacja przechodzi przez, prze, też przez wiele umysłów, wiele świadomości. Jest bo, istnieje w eterze i może być przechwycona również przez wiele bytów. Estos seres, estas inteligencias, pueden voluntariamente o involuntariamente distorsionarla. I te byty, te istoty lub świadomości mogą ją z nich kształcić świadomie lub nieświadomie. I además, la persona que está en hipnosis tiene sus creencias, su mentalidad, su perspectiva sus opiniones, esta estructura mental contamina también esta información. A co więcej, osoba, która jest w stanie hipnozy, ma swoje własne przekonania, swoje własne wartości i wierzenia, swoją własną mentalność i przez tą właśnie strukturę całą mentalną również może dojść do jeszcze kolejnego zanieczyszczenia. Y además, si nosotros queremos investigar, por ejemplo, una persona o un ser que no tiene ninguna conexión con el ambiente hipnótico donde estamos trabajando, esta persona puede no autorizar la salida de informaciones de, de sí mismo. A co więcej, jeśli połączymy się z jakąś istotą, która absolutnie nie należy do tego środowiska hipnotycznego, w którym pracujemy, taka istota może nie zgodzić się na przekazanie informacji. Si hay interacción, si hay interferencias entre un ser y otro, eh, es posible que circule información por las conexiones, por los pactos. Jeśli jest jakaś inter, interferencja między dwoma istotami, to wtedy dzięki tym paktom, albo przez te pakty, przez to połączenie, które istnieje, rzeczywiście wychodzą informacje. Pero si en, en aquella sesión en concreto, ese ser o esa persona se va a cuestionar y no hay ninguna conexión, es muy improbable que llegue una información autorizada. Ale jeśli zdarza się tak, że łączymy się z istotą, która nie ma z tym nic wspólnego, to jest bardzo mało prawdopodobne, że dostaniemy jakąś informację. Entonces, imaginemos que queremos investigar sobre un personaje famoso de la historia. No, na przykład wyobraźmy sobie, że chcielibyśmy otrzymać informację o jakiejś osobie niezwykle znanej, historycznej. Si no tenemos de alguna manera alguna conexión con los elementos del ambiente hipnótico y esta persona, aunque no esté conectada, no autoriza esta, esta información, pues no llega. Więc jeśli wyobrazimy sobie, że ta e, osoba nie jest w żaden sposób połączona z tym środowiskiem hipnotycznym, w którym pracujemy, może się tak zdarzyć, że absolutnie nie zezwoli na żadne przekazywanie e, informacji na swój temat. I cuando pasa esto, hay siempre o casi siempre alguna entidad que se aprovecha de la situación. I kiedy to się dzieje, zazwyczaj pojawia się jakiś byt, który wykorzystuje tę sytuację. Se puede presentar con la mm, supuesta identidad de la persona o del ser que estamos buscando o 
puede, de todas formas, modificar o inventar una información por su cuenta, por su personal ventaja. Może zrobić dwie rzeczy. Albo przyjąć, zidentyfikować się z osobą, o której chcemy zrobić tę sesję, przyjąć jej tożsamość, albo z, zmienić informacje, które, powinny, które chcielibyśmy otrzymać, tak aby to działało na jej korzyść. Nosotros en sesión a clientes podemos trabajar porque el cliente nos autoriza a trabajar en él eh, en su sesión. Podczas sesji dla klientów możemy pracować nad, nad takimi informacjami, bo wtedy bo otrzymujemy zgodę na informacje właśnie dzięki temu klientowi. I podemos trabajar con sus seres queridos, por ejemplo, o con los seres que interfieren con ella, propio porque hay estas conexiones. I możemy pracować na przykład z istotami, które kocha ta dana osoba, lub z bytami, które w nią ingerują, właśnie przez to, przez to połączenie, które tam istnieje. Entonces hay una gran diferencia entre la sesión a un cliente para solucionar sus problemas y hacer sesiones para investigar. Dlatego istnieje tak, tak, taka duża różnica między sesjami, które robimy dla klientów, aby rozwiązać ich problemy, i między sesjami takimi poszukiwawczymi. Por eso, por eso digo que no existe una sesión investigativa. I dlatego właśnie wam mówię, że nie istnieje coś takiego jak sesja badawcza. Lo que existe es un protocolo de sesiones de investigación. To co istnieje, to pewien protokół sesji badawczych. Hay que seguir un protocolo y hay que seguir ejecutar una serie de sesiones y con personas diferentes. Więc trzeba zawsze śledzić ten sam protokół, a jednocześnie wykonać wiele sesji z różnymi osobami. El protocolo tiene que ser único, unívoco, porque hay que preguntar en un tema las mismas preguntas para ir en la misma dirección. Ten protocol powinien być zawsze taki sam, ponieważ należy zadawać takie same pytania, tak aby iść zawsze w tym samym kierunku. Cuanto más está restringido este espacio de investigación, cuanto más podemos tener eh, más probabilidad de tener buena información. Im bardziej zawężamy obszar naszych poszukiwań, tym bardziej prawdopodobne będzie, że otrzymamy dobre informacje. Sí, podemos también eh, aumentar este espacio, pero tenemos que aumentar proporcionalmente el número de sesiones por hacer. Możemy oczywiście rozszerzyć ten obszar, ale wtedy będziemy zmuszeni również rozszerzyć ilość tych sesji. Luego, cuando tenemos una grande serie de sesiones pero estamos hablando de centenas o de hasta de millares de sesiones. Y wtedy mówimy o olbrzymiej liczbie sesji, od setki po, po tysiące. Tenemos que recoger toda aquella información que es común a todas o a casi todas estas sesiones hechas. I wtedy musimy pozbierać te informacje, które są wspólne dla wszystkich bądź prawie wszystkich tych sesji. Esta información común os va a saber que es un porcentaje muy pequeño con respecto a la totalidad de la información. I zobaczycie, że ta informacja wspólna będzie naprawdę niewielkim odsetkiem tych informacji, które się tam pojawią. Son pepitas de oro. To są takie malutkie ziarenka. Es como si nosotros vamos a un río, vamos a coger este filtro, vamos a coger muchísima arena para recoger solo muy pocas pepitillas de oro. Y można to przyrównać do poszukiwania złota, kiedy filtruje się dno rzeki, zbiera się mnóstwo piasku, a na koniec pojawiają się maleńkie ziarenka złota. Esa sí que es información de oro. Y to jest właśnie ta informacja złota. Si hoy podemos decir que hay seres que interfieren bastante con el ser humano y que tienen formas de animales reptiles o de animales a forma de insectos, etc., es porque todo esto sale desde que se empezaron las sesiones de hipnosis y hay muchísimas, millares y millares con esta información común. I jeśli dzisiaj możemy powiedzieć, że są ingerencje, które przybierają formy albo reptilii, albo jakichś insektów, to dlatego, że takie informacje wychodzą od początku naszych sesji hipnotycznych i są wspólne i jest ich tysiące. 
Pero si yo digo que la ciudad de Nueva York, que en el 1452, en exacto en aquel punto, había eh, una casa que vivía un viejo, un viejo que se llamaba Tom, pues solo en aquella sesión ha salido y cuanto más contaminada puede ser, no lo va a saber nadie. Ale jeśli chciałbym powiedzieć, um, przekazać taką informację, że w Nowym Jorku w 1452 roku stał taki a taki dom, w którym mieszkał taki a taki starszy pan o imieniu Tom, to nie mam pojęcia, jak bardzo zanieczyszczona będzie ta informacja. Así entonces se hace investigación. Es un trabajo muy largo, muy duro <coughs> y tiene que ser hecho... Em con un protocolo riguroso y severo. A więc właśnie w taki sposób należy robić sesję badawczą. Jest to proces bardzo długi, ciężki i który wymaga bardzo restrykcyjnego protokołu. I to jest po prostu, że nosotros ja vamos a empezar a hacer ciclos de investigación. I właśnie dlatego zaczniemy teraz robić takie cykle badawcze. La estructura del team que cada vez va creciendo siempre más y el número de clientes que cada día contactan con nosotros nos permiten organizar estos ciclos de investigación. I ponieważ struktura naszego zespołu cały czas się powiększa, a także liczba klientów, którzy, którzy kontaktują się z nami każdego dnia, te dwa te czynniki pozwalają nam na to, żebyśmy zrobili taki cykl badawczy. Creo que ya he dicho todo, o casi todo. Eh, cualquier pregunta podéis escribirla en los comentarios del vídeo o donde sea publicado el vídeo. Myślę, że powiedziałem wszystko, bądź prawie wszystko, a jeśli macie jakieś pytania, to proszę, eh, zadajcie je pod tym wideo. Gracias por vuestra atención. Dziękujemy za waszą uwagę. Y gracias a ti, Milena. Gracias a ti, Carlos. Dziękujemy. Chao. Ciao.